Hey everybody, Kristen Benford, wedding venue owner and venue coach coming to you in the building and running a profitable wedding venue community here on Facebook. Now, if you are watching this video live, go ahead and comment hashtag live. If you catch this video later, comment hashtag replay. Now, here's what's true and here's what I want to talk about today. It is busy, busy, busy wedding season, probably for many of you in the group, right? Facebook, or excuse me, fall is the time of year where we're all trying to keep the wheels on the crazy train just a little bit because so many couples love to have fall weddings. It's beautiful. Generally, the weather's great. In a lot of parts of the country, fall is peak wedding season. Now, here's what's also true. You're busy hosting weddings. If you are busy satisfying current couples, if you are flipping the venue, if you're setting up the venue, if you're dealing with last minute requests and tours and all of the other things, you're probably thinking about like today, what has to get done today? What has to get done this week? You're probably not thinking about the fact that in just a few short weeks, engagement season is going to be upon us. So for those of you who aren't in the wedding industry, engagement season, is typically the time of year between Thanksgiving, Christmas, early January, and as late as Valentine's Day. That's typically the time of year that so many couples get engaged. Now, historically in my business, uh, we used to book about 40% of our weddings during that time period, just in a few short weeks usually, in six to eight weeks. Now, here's an important thing to notice. As we have gotten better at attracting our ideal couples. As we have gotten better at filling our calendar, we've been able to pull that booking season forward. So one of the myths that I want to dispel for you today in today's training is that you should just wait and engagement season will be here and lots of couples will book because lots of couples are booking right now. And if you are busy hosting fall weddings and you're not thinking about booking 2022, you're not thinking about booking 2023, I'm going to tell you that couples are booking and they don't book two venues. So once they've booked another venue, they're not booking you. And that's what's hard about being a small business owner. That's what's hard about being a wedding venue owner who's wearing all the hats and doing all the things because it's really hard for someone to be thinking about, okay, whose wedding is this weekend? And how are we giving really great service and taking really great care of that couple? And whose job is it to be thinking about 2022 and 2023? Now, last I checked, we had more than 180 weddings on the books. And um, so I'm excited about engagement season, but I'm more excited about engagement season for my coaching clients because we're already so booked for 2022 and 2023. Now, what I want to come to you with in this video, in this training is as a venue owner, you are likely inundated and it's only going to get worse between now and the end of the year from advertising agencies, software companies, gurus, talking about all of the different added advertising strategies and tactics you need to get implemented in your business to book more couples, okay? I know that because I'm a venue owner myself. So I sit in an interesting seat in the industry because I own a venue, so I get pitched a lot. But I also get pitched a lot because people know that I run this community and I lead this group and they want to get in front of you guys. They want to be able to pitch you. So I see and hear pitches from two different sides. And hang with me on this video, guys. Hashtag live if you're here live. Hashtag replay if you watch it later. Hang with me on this video because I'm going to say something that will shock you if you really listen and it lands. So if you've been in this community for a while, you have seen tons of my coaching clients say, contact Kristen, book a call with her team, do the venue accelerator, apply for the venue accelerator, book a call. And here's why. I haven't created this community of people who just love me. Um, I, I love them too, right? But I'm not asking them and encouraging them and advocating every day for them to tell you that. They're coming to you and they're seeing the questions that you're asking in this community. And they know that those questions and those challenges aren't solved by more and better advertising. Now, the pitches that we're gonna continue to get between now and the end of the year about engagement season and really, for here and always, and the pitches are going to be about advertising. So if I draw up here on the board, 
advertising is the step that you're getting pitched a lot. And so often as a venue owner, we, so as part of our application process for coaching, um, we have you fill out uh, some details for us. And one of the questions that we ask is what is, what do you believe is stopping you from booking as many weddings as you want to book? And time and time and time again, we see the responses to be awareness, exposure, advertising. So when you get these pitches from big industry websites who want thousands of dollars and thousands of dollars every single year to advertise on those sites, or when you, someone shows up in your Facebook feed and they tell you figuring out the perfect Facebook ad or Instagram ad is going to be the thing that solves all your problems, or maybe someone's pitching TikTok or Reels or whatever, there's always going to be a new flavor of the month in terms of advertising. And I know if you feel like exposure or awareness is your biggest problem, it is easy to believe those pitches. Now, here's what's true. There are some phenomenal advertising strategies out there. There are great software tools out there. I don't doubt any of those things. But what I want to talk about today, especially in regards to the fact that engagement season is actually just around the corner, is why advertising your business better is absolutely not the first step if you really want to be more successful in this business. What I'm going to talk about today is a brief overview of a few of the key points that I teach in the Venue Accelerator, but I want you to understand why just spending money on advertising is like setting it on fire for many of you. Here's why. Okay. Now, we host about 100 weddings a year. Generally, we spend less than $2,000 a year on advertising. I've spent, a, I've definitely spent more money than I need to in the last couple of years, just testing some things for my coaching clients because I'm happy to spend my money so they don't have to waste and spend their money on new things to see if they're effective or not. But if you said, Kristen, how do you have 180 weddings booked right now? It's not because we're spending $2,000 a month on paid advertising like so many venue owners do. It's because we built the kind of business We've built the kind of strategy, we've built it around our ideal couples and they want to buy. And that's very different because so often I talk to people in this business and they're like, Kristen, I'm not a good salesperson. I'm like, great. I don't want you to be a salesperson. Honestly, the folks who come to me who are salespeople, we have to undo more bad habits because people don't want to be sold, but they do want to buy. I want you to think about it this way. Let's imagine that I was holding a bucket. And that bucket had lots and lots and lots of holes in it. It had holes in terms of pricing. It had holes in terms of you don't know who you're marketing to. It has holes in terms of communicating your value. It had, has holes in terms of does the market need another venue? It has holes. There's lots and lots of holes in the business strategy that is this bucket, right? If you dump more paid advertising dollars into that bucket with a bunch of holes, Money is literally just going to leak out the bottom. Of course, if you spend enough money, some leads, some couples are going to book, right? But it's inefficient if you're just spending more money on advertising because you haven't yet built what your ideal couples need and want. When you do that, you don't have to sell. People want to buy. When you do that, you don't have to spend a bunch of money on paid advertising because literally you have couples who want to book and are finding you, okay? Now, here, so what I'm talking about is what is the market opportunity? Now, here's what's really interesting. Time and time, time again, venue owners are trying to solve the problem of booking more weddings by either more paid advertising or adding a pergola or adding a patio or paving your parking lot, right? Guys, I've coached probably well over 200 venue owners now across North America, and very, very few of them have added additional capital expenditures in their business because they figured out instead, instead, what is the real market opportunity? Now, you might say, yeah, Kristen, whatever. I did some research. I, I mean, I've looked at my competition. I know. Okay. Right. And you might say, but my business is unique. My venue is unique. There's nothing like my space. And that's true. And couples are forced to compare apples, 
and oranges every day when they're booking a venue. Of course, your venue is unique. Of course, it's hard to compare because venues include different things with different price points. So what really is the opportunity, right? To understand how to build your business in a way that the market wants to buy it, you first have to understand what are the gaps that exist in the marketplace and why are couples choosing the venues that they're choosing today, right? So it starts with market opportunity. From there, when we know the opportunity that exists in the marketplace, then we can start to identify, okay, this opportunity exists. Here's the couple who is really well served with my type of venue. And I don't just mean style, I mean approach, right? Are you an all weekend venue? Are you doing multiples? Are you um, very DIY? Are you heavy service? Like, Who is your ideal client and what do they need? And how are you making decisions in your business to give them what they need so they wanna buy. Guys, it's simple, it's just not easy and it's not the way most venue owners manage their strategy, manage their business. What I see and wanna hear after hundreds and hundreds, guys, we've had conversations with more than 900 venue owners across North America and some across the world. What we see time and time and time again is that this is completely lacking for most venue owners. Most venue owners, and if this is you, I'm not picking on you, I promise, I'm shining a light on what can be different in your business and what needs to change before you spend more money on advertising. So most venue owners have simply looked at their competition, generally priced $500 under them and assumed their phone would ring. There's no real clarity on who is their ideal couple. There's definitely not clarity for most venue owners clients on why they're the best venue for them, right? It's one thing to know who your ideal couple is. It's a whole nother, much more impactful ball game if your ideal couple recognizes you're the best fit for them. And that is not just about style, okay? From there, when you really have clarity on who is your ideal client, then how are you communicating your value? How do your couples understand that your price point is on par for the marketplace, that your price point is absolutely worth that value and more? And this is not about discounting. This is not about pricing under your competitors just to book because that's a race to the bottom in this industry that is not going to be effective long-term. We charge close to $7,000 on peak Saturdays. Now, I've coached venue owners who charge $12,000. I've coached venue owners who charge $1,500. So my price point doesn't matter in regards to your price point. But the reason why I share that is because we have mass market appeal to couples. We are a high volume venue. We could book a lot more weddings than we do. We turn away a lot of business, but we're not cheap. We're getting a larger percentage of the couple's budget without them having to sacrifice everything else that they want in their big day because our value proposition is clear and our differentiation within the market is clear, okay? From there, those are all decisions that you need to make in your business, guys. And if you simply looked at your competitors, you looked at some websites, maybe you secret shop some venue owners, I do not recommend that, by the way, Um, and you built a a website, I'm going to tell you you're probably missing tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in opportunity a year, because your website is simply the output of all of these important decisions that you need to make in your business. So if you looked at, if you look at your website today and the way that that was put together was, Hey, this is what I like, excuse me. This is what I like on a website. This is what I want, but you're not representative of your ideal client. Okay, I'm going to tell you, you're missing a ton of opportunity. And if your website is beautiful, great. That's the basic minimum in this business. Beautiful does not equal effective. Once your website is set up and designed to sell for you guys, then it's time to advertise your business more effectively. Then it's time to potentially spend more money on paid advertising because the machine is more efficient. The machine is designed to fill holes in the bucket so that when you put more money into the top of the advertising funnel, more stays in it, more couples book, more couples understand why you're the best fit for them. When you really start to understand this, you understand, or guys, when you really start to understand this, let me say it a different way. When you really start to understand this, you can start to see why 
some venues really thrive and some venues really struggle. Okay. If now, sometimes it's strategic. Sometimes venues are really built and purposeful in this process. Sometimes venues were built and are beautiful and they happen to hit a market need, but they don't have any strategy behind it. They got lucky. And that's what's hard in today's market. Back in 2014, when we opened, a lot fewer venues were in the marketplace. It was much easier to be successful. I had a conversation with someone a few weeks ago who spent a lot of money on a beautiful place and really, really struggling right now. And they said, Kristen, my, my neighbor had a venue and it was beautiful. It was booked all the time. I just really thought that if I built one, I'd be successful too. And I've heard that so many, many times. And that's why I'm coming to you with this message today, because whether you're a prospective venue owner or whether you're an established venue owner, what I'm sharing today is absolutely relevant to you. So building the kind of business that your ideal couples want to wait in line for, in case that's partially about your building, style matters. It does. I'm not going to say it doesn't matter, but it's definitely not just about building a better venue. And one of the things that I see so many prospective and new venue owners do is overbuild the building, thinking that building something bigger and better and taking on a lot more debt is the way to be successful. Guys, I'm going to argue that that does not have to be the case. And the more debt that you have, the more debt that you take on, the more debt you have to service. Okay. So I would much rather see you build the kind of business that couples want to buy than get sucked into advertising pitches between now and engagement season and during engagement season because you know you need more couples in the pipeline. It's not just about more leads. I don't care how many leads you have. I don't even talk about leads with my coaching clients. And maybe that baffles you. I don't talk about automation with my coaching clients. These are all the things that I see pitches for as a venue owner. I don't care about those things. I care about how many qualified tours are you booking and what percentage of those couples are booking. Anything else is vanity metrics. Any advertising agency can get you hundreds of leads, but if none of them book, what are you paying for? And that's partly on the advertising agency, but it's partly on you if you haven't done these pieces yet. So what I don't want you to see, or what I don't want to see you do is light your money on fire. And too many people do that when they jump straight into advertising. And it feels right, though, like the right choice because I just need more, more people to know about us. I just need more people to be aware of us. And I know that feels so true. And we've hosted more than 500 weddings. And still, to this day, in the small town of 7,000 people that I live in, people still say, well, I've never even heard of you before. I didn't know this was back here. Okay, great. I don't have any issue with that because you're not my ideal client. I don't need the entire world to know who we are. That's expensive. Awareness is expensive. I don't need the whole world to know who we are. I need the right hundred couples a year to know who we are, to love our space, to love our business, and to book. It's not about awareness, guys. It's not about more paid advertising. All right. So if you are mind blown and you know you have not taken an approach like this in your business. You know you banked on build it and they will come. You know that paid advertising is not the right first step. Book a call with my team, kristenbinford.com slash accelerator, kristenbinford.com slash accelerator. Now, sometimes that's me on the phone talking to you. Sometimes it's Jerry on the phone. Sometimes I just want you to know whether it's me or whether it's Jerry. Jerry has been in the business with me for years. He has also been in the venue business with me for years. And either way, we will serve you in this conversation. What I don't want is for you to stay stuck. What I don't want is for you to wake up in the middle of January and feel like, oh, crap. Not as many couples. I thought it was just supposed to rain bookings come January, right? So guys, kristenbenford.com slash accelerator is how you book a call with my team. Hashtag live if you're here live, hashtag replay if you watch this later. And if you have any questions or comments on what I shared back here, 
<laughs> type them in the comments below. All right, everybody, we'll see you in a future video.